Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's June 2020. We're doing our next video in our class of videos about the vessels, the naval vessels in DCS World. We've covered them all the way up to the new aircraft carriers. So what we're covering today, to be specific, is the John C. Stennis, that is CVN-74, and that was either commissioned or laid down in 1995. Let me have a look. That was, yep, yeah, commissioned in 1995. Now, note this is a subclass from the Nimitz main class. This was the Nimitz CVN 68, which was commissioned in 1975. We've also recently had released in DCS supercarrier module. Supercarrier is CVN 71, Theodore Roosevelt, CVN 72. Abraham Lincoln, and CVN-73, George Washington. These are also Nimitz nuclear subclass. So by doing this John C. Stennis today, we're essentially covering CVN-73, sorry, 71, 72, 73, 74. There are minor changes between them, but this video is enough to basically cover them all. Anything you want to add, uh, Daishi? Hello, Daishi. I haven't seen you for a long time, and thank you, and welcome back. Uh, thank you. Um... There's not too much to really add specifically about the Stannis, but with DCS, um, it might look a little different. Yeah, like We'll get into that when we look mm -hmm. at the models. I'll explain no, why don't. some things look Yeah, so this one's the Stannis. The CVN-74 is going to be what we call an old-style model. It's going to have a relatively uh, old mesh, and these three here are brand-new high mesh. Really cool-looking stuff. But anyway, we'll go through that, as Daishi said. Over to our sheet. Daishi puts these together. He's a naval guy, and this is his kind of thing. And as you can see, there's lots of Daishi-type information. So it's going to take a while to go through. So if you're going to stick with us, then go and get a coffee, go and get your tea, and we'll get started. So, so CVN-74, USS John C. Stennis, Nimitz-class nuclear aircraft carrier cvn and i should say at this point we also did an interview on a, a nuclear machinist's mate on one of these aircraft do you remember d yeah actually i talked to him he helped oh he, he gave me a little tip as to what the difference is between enterprise and the uh the Enterprise's reactors and these one i was putting that in the class the enterprise was an older class to the nimitz class am i right if i recall right it's it's the first u.s nuclear carrier Right, so CVN-65 Enterprise has just been taken, decommissioned now, 2017. So that was the first nuclear class, we think. And then obviously came the Nimitz class, which is a great website here on Wikipedia. Amazing stuff here in Wikipedia generally. But if you want to come here and look at all the different types and uh, uh, sub-articles, it's really cool stuff. And Theodore Roosevelt subclass. Um, can you explain roughly why you've called it Theodore Roosevelt subclass before we move on? Typically, if you get a subclass, that means it's roughly the same as the main class, but... There have been changes made to it, such as this has had like a couple more pieces of armor added to it in mm -hmm. a few different places and a couple modifications. So it's a bit and like, the way I think about it, it's a bit like the blocks here when it comes to uh, aircraft, right? So you get an F-16C, an F-16 is an F-16C, but as the years go on, more F-16Cs have been making, but new blocks have been making, have small little changes. So I'm guessing it's the same kind of thing as that. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, I mean, the outside observer just sees an F-16C, but if you really go into it, it's an F-16C block 29 or whatever because it's got a small change with the wiring here, a different screen there or something like that. Right, let's crack on. Class details. The Nimitz class would represent a return to supercarriers matching the Enterprise class size compared to the Kitty Hawk class. This class would make space savings compared to the Enterprise class from usage of two reactors developed from the project to design a reactor for destroyers and frigates compared to the Enterprise's eight. So the Enterprise had eight reactors? Yep, and had eight uh, uh, submarine-sized reactors. This space saving would go to expand jet fuel storage by 90% and 50% more ammunition storage. This subclass would add extra potential with 2.5 inch thick Kevlar layer over vital spaces, armor deck and bulkheads. However, it would mean some reduction in its ammo stowage. The class also has a design flaw in where it can list to starboard during combat load. Oops. The aircraft for these classes that have been known to operate can vary depending on intended operation and can act as a forward base for many operations including disaster relief and human humanitarian aid. These craft tend to often operate 
as the centerpiece for a US Navy battle group with flag officers on board. The ship also has some extensive repair facilities for aircraft, had a microelectronics repair area, interesting, and has been noted to use 3D printers for repair work. US Navy carriers typically run with a maintenance cycle where an aircraft carrier goes through maintenance after a deployment, then training and testing of new systems, and then goes out for deployment. Halfway through its life, about 25 years, which is amazing when you think about it, the carrier will undergo a refueling and overhaul period where the reactor fuel is replaced and an extensive overhaul takes place, which can last up to three years. These carriers are intended to operate for an estimated 50 years total and will likely remain with the US Navy for many decades in the future. And I remember speaking when we were speaking to the uh, nuclear chap a few months ago, D, the, the engines will never come out. It's not like a, um, like a car or a kind of normal small vessel where the engine could come out and be replaced. These engines never come out. They're built into the structure and that's it, right? You can refuel them once, but that's it. Yeah, it's like it's like that for most ships. If you want to like try to take the engine out, you, it's like ripping apart most of the ship. Usually if the engine's on the ship's... Is that even the same for kind of um, uh, like just, just, just a basic turbine, uh, you know, kind of gas burner of like a, like a frigate or something? Is that the same? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like trying to take the entire engine block out would be very difficult. I never really thought about that. So it's a case if they do break down, it's a case of repairing them. Yeah, like I don't, I don't really know of too many engines that break down that hard. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's going to be auxiliaries more, more than need. Okay, yeah, I don't really know anything about it, but I find it very interesting. Very good. DCS specific info. Nimitz class, as we talked about, Theodore Roosevelt subclass nuclear powered aircraft carrier. Newport News Shipbuilding, Virginia, yard number 641. CVN 74, John C. Stennis, lay down third, uh, sorry, 13th of the 3rd, 1991, launched 11th of the 11th, 93, and commissioned, uh, how do you guys do this, 9th of the 12th, uh, 1995, on my 15th birthday. Yep, uh, December, 9th, December 9th. Uh, and there are 10 planned and 10 were complete. Is that the 10 of the Nimitz class were complete? Correct. General characteristics. Displacement. Light. 80,000 tons. 78,000 long. Do you remember what long tons means? I always forget. Is that long tons is US and uh, the little t we're using here is metric tons. Metric tons. So 80,000. So... I'm just trying to think how... I mean, that's, that is a pretty heavy vessel, isn't it? But uh, wasn't Yamato like 70,000 tons or something like that? I guess that was all armor, though, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it, I think she had maybe about a foot thick armor or yeah, something like that. Yeah, we did have a good chat about this last time we did a carrier. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that 80,000 tons is light. But considering the size of these things, and they are massive, obviously... I've always found that pretty light, and that's because, presumably, these things have got to go fast at the end of the day. I mean, I'm just seeing down there, 32 knots, 80,000 tons. That's, I mean, it's really impressive, really impressive speed. Getting up to kind of frigate speed, aren't you? That's, well, not quite, but okay. Very good, or destroyer speed. Full uh, 103,000 metric tons. There's lots of aeroplanes and fuel and bombs and stuff like that. Length, 1,040 feet. Um, our waterline overall just under 1100 feet now that's a big ship really big ship yeah the thing that scares me about this was i was with when i served the katie hawk i remember walking by that one thinking that was big and then i see these numbers i'm mm -hmm. like oh absolutely that is really that's the size of a village it's crazy man uh the beam is i mean not that big at the water 134 feet but overall including in the deck 200, nearly 260 feet, which is like longer than most boats. It's just almost impossible to imagine this thing. The draft is not actually that bad. Uh, 38 to, to 41 feet, depending on load and stuff like that. So, no, not too bad. Speed is 32 plus knots. I mean, is, is 32, is, is that its official flank speed? Or do we, do we not know its official top speed? Or Um... 32 plus is probably what they're willing to admit. It's probably got some extra speed mm, mm. just 
regular engineer, and then flank speed uh, would go faster than that. Well, um, according, yeah, according to the nuclear engineer, uh, these things could get really, really fast. You can, yeah, I remember talking to him, and I mean, it's just really impressive. I find it really impressive to have that kind of speed. Obviously, they're going to be burning a lot of uranium or whatever, but it's um, there's a lot of horsepower going on there. Range is, for all intents and purposes, practically, I mean, it never runs out. 25 years, you know, however far you can go, 32 knots in 25 years, which is around the world about 50 million times. It's, um, it's uh, incredibly impressive. Uh, crew. Really hard to imagine this, but 3,532 just for the ship. Which, for a ship, is amazing, right? I mean, the latest books I read, the latest books I've been reading are World War II uh, uh, dreadnought battleships, and most, yeah, we're talking Bismarck, just over 2,000. I mean, that is just, and then you go to 3,500 just for the ship. Almost unbelievable. And two and a half thousand for the air, and yes, it varies, obviously, but and that's a, that's a total of six thousand people, which is just but just the weight of six thousand people is like hundreds of tons. It's just almost impossible to imagine. Any, yeah. have, you, have you served? Did you say you'd served on a carrier? Um, I served on a destroyer, but I was on the Kitty Hawk for a couple of days as mm -hmm. like a transfer going from land to carrier to ship. Marjorie, any comments on your experience? It really blew my mind just how little that ship rocked compared to uh, mm. the little stuff I'm on mm. and just how big it is. And it's like mm. you've got some uh, some hallways where it's like you can look down there. It's just it's mm -hmm. just like uh, openings for just mm. just keeps on going. It's like some of those pictures where it's just you got that repeating thing just smaller and smaller. It's crazy. Um, did you say uh, what destroyer were you on? I, f I should know this. I've forgotten. It's a long time since we uh, spoke. I was on a Spruins class uh, USS Cushing, and then I was on uh, USS Steatham, which was an Orly Burke, but it's an older oh. one than the one we got. How interesting! Yeah, destroyers are my favourite historically. I love now I know about ships. I love destroyers. Anyway, there are three armor. There are three protective decks, being the flight deck, hangar and lower deck, plus side armor and some bulkheads. There is some boxed shape protection areas for ammo and vital zones with 2.5 inch, 63 more thick Kevlar. The water portions, was that the water, water, what's that? Uh, that's supposed to be underwater. The underwater portions have five longitudinal bulkheads in which the fourth is noted to be three inches thick. Also, the bottom area, such as the keel, is also protected. So this is not this is not battleship protection, but there is some protection. Um, you know, we haven't got we haven't got 12, 18 inch sides here, but uh, it's, you know, it's not meant to be hit by guns. But it it does have protection around the key areas and whatnot. Yeah, it's uh, got some decent protection on it. Also, the uh, the Kuznetsov also had like. I have bulkheads too, but when I read that, I'm like, oh, five walls. And then when I read this one, I realized that they're probably armored walls. So mm -hmm. I have to go back and change that for the Kuznetsov. Okay. Engineering. Uh, two times A4W Westinghouse nuclear reactors. Two big ones. Four times Westinghouse steam turbines. And combined, uh, an almost unimaginable 280 thousand i've said that right horsepower shaft horsepower four shafts and we don't know the prop type uh four emergency diesels now the diesels i'm guessing they're more for electricity than drive is that right or have i got that wrong uh what these are for like if you completely lose power you still have to cool the nuclear reactor so i think that that's what those emergency diesels are for roger They'll probably in a probably in a burning jet fuel to keep it going but uh, you have to do what you can to keep those rods cool and keep them from mm -hmm. melting down and if you haven't listened to our interview of the the uh, nuclear engineer i really suggest you do i'll link it in the video description it's really interesting especially the what ifs what if you overheat the reactor what if this happens what if you have to sink the ship uh, you know, there's just some amazing things that boggle the mind with the physics that go on. Systems, right? Here's where it gets funky. This, this is what this is what uh, D Daishi loves. So, radar and fire control. 
Uh, you best explain any symbology here, like replacement symbology, anything like that, uh, color coding before I kick off, Daishi. Yeah, I don't have anything too different here. It's just they made it look better. Roger. So, an SPS-49V5 with a range of 0 to 463 kilometers, which is just stupid for... Uh, up to 30 kilometers, no matter 90,000 feet, you know, as high as you're ever going to want to scan. That's a two dimensional. So, if two dimensional, if you, the, the kind of radar you'd get in a um, in an aircraft, for instance, would be a two dimensional radar. Air search radar with IFF, auto target detection, and electronic counter countermeasures has two rotation speeds for short and long range. SPS 48 Echo. 4.1 to 407 kilometers, up to 90,000 feet. A three-dimensional air search radar. So three-dimensional where we can do, you know, we can do azimuth, we can do altitude, and we can do range all in one sweep, if you like, if you know what I mean. Uh, with IFF, uses electronic scan for altitude and spins for azimuth. It can complement the SPS-49, so they can work together with this chap here. SPS 67V1, we've got 0.4 to 65 kilometers, is a two dimensional surface search and navigation with limited low flyer and uh, anti submarine? Anti ship missile. Anti ship missile ability. V1 uses antenna similar to the SPS 10. Okay, so that is that our. So that's surface search and navigation. Okay, it'd be interesting to see what that antenna looks like. SPN 41, 0 0.4 to 73 kilometers. Air traffic control system used to send guidance data to LSO for aircraft coming in for landing. Out of interest, is this anything to do, do you know, with the data link that can hook up to the aircraft's systems? This one does not, but the, those are further down. Roger. SPN 43 Bravo, 0 0.2 to 130 kilometers, 90,000 feet, two dimensional ATC air traffic control radar with IFF can ID aircraft and bring in a for approach vector and act as a backup air search radar. SPN 44.2 to 93 kilometers, air traffic control range rate radar that computes and records true and relative airspeed of incoming aircraft. And that was hand operated. Interesting. Two times SPN 46 0 0.2 to 74 kilometers air traffic control radar that provides precision approach and landing sends course corrections through data link. Okay. That's well, yeah, interesting. I wanted to make a correction. Yeah, the SPN 41, I believe, is involved with part of the data link. Mm -hmm. I think of 41 and maybe 46. Roger, noted. SPS 64 V9 0.4 to 37 kilometers Sur surface search and navigation has civilian equipment. So I was gonna say that's our civilian type radar, then. Okay, SPS 73 0.4 to 46 kilometers two dimensional surface search and navigation short range uses Furuno civilian antenna can work with SPS 64. Six times Mark 95.2 to one, say 20 kilometers, 90,000 feet target illuminator for Sea Sparrow missile and possibly ESSM. Remind me what the ESSM is, please. Enhanced Sea Sparrow missile. Right, so this is for defense. So this aircraft carrier obviously doesn't have uh, offensive capability per se, it's all about defensive, and we have the ability to fire Sea Sparrows. Slash the uh, um okay we'll talk about that in a bit when we get more into the weapons but okay we'll run with that is that so is that illuminator is that fire control uh, this one effectively instead of using your radar on the nose of your plane it just points this at the uh, target Roger gotcha okay and from uh, two thousand seven onwards two times Mark ninety five was that an extra two times Mark eighty five or have they removed four Mark eighty five uh, were you removed Two of them at that point. Maybe they advanced the radar so that they didn't need so many, or I don't know. Um, not entirely sure. Roger. Four times Mark 90 question mark range. Oh, fire control for the Phalanx Sea Whiz uh, does not have IFF. Could consist of search radar and fine tune tracker. 
short range. So are these in the kind of bell housing of the SeaWiz? Yep, this is the, uh, the radar that's in the, the white thing. Yep. Yeah, sure. Um, 2007 onwards, Mark 90s, there's no change there, or was there a change? Um, I think there was one or two that was removed that was replaced with the uh, RAM line. Oh, because we've got RAMs, haven't we? How interesting. Yep. Mark 23 TAS, 0.3 to 203 kilometers, 90,000 feet, two-dimensional surface to air and surface to surface target acquisition system for Sea Sparrow. Now that's interesting. Why on earth do we have a surface-to-surface -surface acquisition system for a Sea Sparrow, which is an air to ground to air missile in this case? Uh, sea Sparrow and a Pinch can be used against the uh, land targets, although it's not preferred. Oh, was unaware. Uh, 2007, yeah, okay. Uh, by 2007, the SPQ-9B, where it says minus 07, does that mean before 07 or after 07? Uh, minuses are removed, pluses are added. Right, okay. Right, so these that I've been talking about with the minus 07, they were, they've been removed. Right, got it. Added, um, so so taken away was that, and added was SPQ 9 Bravo. 0.2 to 46 kilometers, and that many meters. Uh, we can get a better look at that. Uh, okay, so what, 6,000 feet or something? Four and a half thousand feet, three dimensional track while scan, air and surface search radar with video, has many modules, air surface beacon, ASMD. What's ASMD? Anti ship missile defense. And surface MTT. What's MTT? I can't remember that one. Um, I think that involves searching for surface targets. Right, so is this. Or so this is added into is this the controller for the sea sparrow or is this a, a generic item it's it's a you would use it for like sea sparrow or ram or something like that all right okay so that's that right so that was removed that was added okay electronic warfare gets a bit nerdy at this point there's going to be lots of this we've got an slq 32a b4 which i recognized from another ship it's a questionable range Two suites linked to one console, resulting in four units total, provides ESM such as RWR-like functions, so listening, uh, ELINT-style listening to radar, and electronic countermeasure jamming. System is linked to SRBOC decoy launchers for automatic deployment, and of course ships all have all military ships have decoy launchers, chaff, flare, whatever. So if we go on to those uh, decoy launchers, Mark 36 SR BOC, six plus 40 each. Uh, we've got varies on cartridge used. Six tubed 130 mil mortar decoys, three tubes at 45 degrees, uh, three tubes at 60 degrees, so they're gonna kind of look like little hedgehog spikes, aren't they, to us? Yep. Yeah, these ones are static, unlike some of the Chinese ones where they're articulated. Roger. Ammo. Note. All, uh, not all starts time found. Also, unable to confirm which ones the U.S. Navy specifically use. So, uh, all listed except the uh, low rock, which USN does not use. Okay. So, to ammo. We've got a Mark 182 SRBOC chaff split into two stages. Macro cassettes for stage one. And plastic wrapped parcels for stage two has mod one and two version. Anything you want to add to that or clarify in there? Yeah, this is just a shaft launcher, uh, but the shaft that these things fire is going to be a lot more than what you expect out of an aircraft so to, to make so up for. So it's a big thumping unit. It's got a lot more to distracting, distracting to do. Okay. Yep. Uh, nineteen eighty six. So from commission. Mark 214 CNAT, never heard of it, but distraction chaff. Uh, and CNAT again, 216 type seduction chaff. What's the difference yeah. between seduction and distraction? Yeah, first off, those two CNATs, those are NATO rounds, so I'm assuming that they'll probably be used by a Navy, but mm -hmm. distraction is designed to more of like mask a unit or something. Like this is just going to be a giant cloud of chaff, mm -hmm. or seduction. Seduction, you're trying to encourage the missile to attack that. Right, so seduction, like an, seduction looks like a ship. Distraction just disturbs. Yeah, so a better way to think of it is all the uh, the 
all the decoys and such that you have on planes, those are all seduction. They're trying to mm -hmm. get you to attack that specific clan. Mm-hmm. Roger. Well, yeah. And, yeah, well, distractions just... It just produces a giant RCS, whereas, like, some of the later ones will explain how, how right, big yeah. of a radar return they see. And these are important things, uh, and that you wouldn't think, or I wouldn't think, or oh, a chaff could never hide a ship. A ship is massive. You couldn't hide that. But apparently this stuff works. I mean, there's been um, silkworms, Chinese, uh, Russian, sorry, and then Chinese, anti-ship missiles fired in the Persian Gulf, um, uh, straight to formers, that have been fooled, I believe, by chaff, uh, which is amazing, I think. But, you know, if it works, then it works. Um Okay. Mark 186, torch, standard flare decoys, lights upon contact with water. Never heard of this. Mod 2 improves flame. Mod 3 is advanced flare decoy. So this is some kind of, not intelligent, but modified flare thing. Yeah, it's a flare that, I guess the chemical compound ignites on the water. It uses like a fuel that just, that just produces giant uh, infrared signal. Roger, okay. I mean, um, the way it's, we've done a video on chaff and flare, and so there is some interesting chemistry going on there. Some types of flare launched by aircraft uh, are not ignited per se, but as soon as they're, you know, given access to the air, they oxygen in the air, they automatically light, which I find interesting, things like that. An EX-252, a multi-stage uh, IR flare in order to walk off an IR seeker starts with high intensity flare, then goes to long lasting flare. So, a, a, quite a clever flare system here that's trying to take away a not a sidewinder but an IR based Maverick or something. Yeah, uh, this would be for missiles like there was a couple Russian uh, mm -hmm. anti ship missiles that used IR seeking, mm -hmm. like the uh, mm -hmm. oh. The one that was on the, the Riga that we did. Yeah, it's, Shoot, I can't remember. it's completely normal to have uh, an air, uh, uh, a missile, anti-ship missile. Not, I'm saying they all do this. Um, like AGM 84D doesn't do this. I don't think. God, I hope I don't get it wrong. But some use radar for terminal guidance. Some use IR signature for terminal guidance. Right, and so you can obviously put off a big thumping great three-ton. Russian missile that has an IR seeker with that. Um, I'm guessing you don't know what missile's coming at you, so I'm guessing you would just put everything out. You don't know what it is. Is it radar guided? Is it IR guided? It's moving at Mach 2, so you don't really know. So you just put everything out, I assume. I don't really know. Um, or maybe you would. Maybe if, it's, if it was picking up a radar, a fire control radar from it, or a track radar, then I guess you'd know it's a radar missile. Yeah, that would be part of it. The other part of it, too, is remember that these guys have, like, they typically come with uh, escorts and they'll have uh, uh, AWACS and such with it. So it might get a decent idea of what's coming at it from that, just that and whatever yeah. radar was used to lock it on. Some books I've been reading about modern, maybe, yeah, modern back in, in the 90s, about how you've got your kind of your team, your, uh, your, your kind of war team sitting in the main control center of the ship and they're shouting out with their various uh, it's kind of amazing how simple it is in a way and they've got their various screens their various sensors and the guy with the ew is shouting out okay you know we've got vampires coming in from here or we've got ir missiles coming in from here and then that gets shouted to the other guy who controls the uh sea whiz or whatever um so i'd love to do a study level at some point as like that it would be awesome but anyway let's um Plug on. Uh, we've got an E. We've got an Mark two four five giant it deploys five submunitions, releasing warm smoke, glowing particles, and gas radiation. Each can walk off IR seekers. Giant. What do you know about that? I don't know too much. It's like I was just took me a lot just to try to find a lot of mm. all of these things. Mm. Um, um, but I think I think the way this works is not only does it just release like a flare but it mm -hmm. lights up a cloud with ir energy mm, interesting okay also super chaff star produces a large cloud a chaff cloud creating a radar cross section of 10 kilometers squared at a frequency of that many gigahertz up to 20 kilometers dead squared for spot frequencies okay super gemini combo ir chaff 30 seconds chaff and uh, flare and chaff cloud with eight kilometers squared radar cross section. 
1981, which this vessel wasn't built until 14 years later, but apparently Super High Ram 3, Sparboy Bright Flare creates 2.5 meter flame that recreates a large ship heat signature. Swow IR, six sab munition releasing IR clouds, each one bigger than the last 15 second burn time. SLAD, acoustic torpedo decoy, first sends a jamming signal, then sends out simulated ship noise. Is this something that's dragged or is something that's shot off? Do we know with I, SLAD? I think this one's just shot off. Roger. Uh, lead, lead, I don't know how you want to say it, acoustic torpedo decoy, spread decoy in a pattern. Is that like, again, is that a, a vehicle that's sent off, do we think? Yeah, I think this is the same as last one. You just throw something off the ship, roughly. Watch out. I guess probably, mm, I was going to say torpedo might be a bigger threat to a, to a carry. I don't really know. Um, oh, yeah. The Russians built like some super big torpedoes that are designed specifically to sink uh, ah. aircraft carriers. They're, they're monster. Roger. Okay. SLQ 25A Nixie. I remember that. Uh, it's a towed torpedo decoy connected with fiber optic cable. Can simulate machinery noises of target ship at a louder intensity. Can also send active pings back to torpedo at a louder intensity. So again, it's this is going to be dragged behind on a chain or whatever on a cable. And um, it's going to be an intelligence system that's trying to lure that decoy to blow it up, right? Yep. Well, cool. not exactly to blow it up. What it's going to do is it's going to attract it towards it. It's going to go straight for it. All of a sudden, it's like, wait, there's nothing here. And it's going to try to start searching for something. Right, because there's nothing hitting the fuse, right? Yep. How interesting. I wonder what happens when it gets to that point. What happens? Interesting. Okay. Added 2007 SLQ 20 Bravo. IFF interrogator designed to be secure and work in heavy jamming environments. Also, possibly can trigger foreign IFF responses, likely on the SPS 49 or SPS 67 radar for an emits class. SATCOM comms. Okay, we've got an OE82 WSC1 ultra high frequency SAT connection. Can establish connection with the UHF follow on SAT constellation for uses such as Dharma voice and data comms. Okay. Challenge Athena 2, WS2, uh, sorry, WSC8, SHF. What's SHF? Uh, super high frequency. Never heard of it. And, well, uh, super high frequency, if I recall right, that's, that's uh, below UHF, but above VHF. I'm oh, really? Right. I was unaware. Okay, it's on SAPCOM 2. Connection to super high frequency based civilian satellite network for high speed SATCOM, but the system is pay for amount of data sent through a network. That's a USN problem. WSC6 V01 super high frequency SATCOM 4 legacy SHF based military satellite connection. So I guess you've got a lot of redundancies here built in. You yeah, mm -hmm. you know, like you'll see over time, it's just that. Things get more data hungry, and it's just just trying to feed it. So you're adding more systems. On. Okay, USC thirty eight. What's EHF then? Well, uh, extremely high frequency. And <laughs> these names are stupid. So is that above ultra? Uh, that is a yep. That's above ultra. Okay, used to connect to Millstar compatible satellite for secure jam resistant low probability of intercept comms. Global Broadcast System, GBS, one-way high-speed network for unclassified and classified data, video, and other services. So when you're going to send some information out, whatever it is, I guess you decide which system you're going to use. Whereas in your house, you could use, well, if you well, you just use your phone, really, or maybe your maybe a internet. But this, you've got to think, hmm, what system am I going to use? How, you know, important is the data? How big is the data? And so on. It's also probably some of them aren't designed to use certain systems to... You know, like it's just designed, okay, we're going to explicitly use this for that because of security reasons or something. Roger. Common tactical data link. Secure satellite-based data link for secure data and video streaming link designed with UAVs in mind. Added 2009 common broadband satellite. That's funny. Uh, uh, super high frequency sat 
one designed to send voice video data can connect to both civilian and uh, military based constellations for high speed data connection okay uh, so that's obviously gonna be satellite based still uh, added to seven we've got this here provides connection to defense satellite communication systems wideband global satcom networks for high to medium speed data rate communications Taken away 2014 was him and him added 2014 it was Navy multiband terminal designed to replace multiple systems to provide connections to super high and extremely high frequency base networks and new networks such as the advanced EHF satellite network HF is that just high free yeah high frequency yep. uh, radio system cap uh, capable of voice and data using both whip and fan wire antenna, so old school. Yep. The uh, the Navy adopted high frequency and he never gave it up. Yeah, That's right. That's a nice bonus. Yeah, um, I mean, there, there are advantages and disadvantages of all these frequencies, right? Uh, UHF might be great for something, HF might be good for something, and so on. But, you know, they have different, different ranges, different weather conditions and stuff. Stuff works differently. Ultra high frequency point to point used for UHF line of sight surface to surface voice and data communications. UHF AS4291 UHF antenna for surface to air communications. SSR-1 AS2815 antennas designed to receive teletype communications from satellite. And we're on to the systems. Right. Advanced combat direction system ACDS and upgrade to NTDS block zero upgrade hardware and software block one expands capability for JTID and better data management Use, uses for non Aegis ships such as CVs, LHAs and LTDs. I think you're going to have to explain ACDS to us a bit better. Uh, yep, this is, uh, you know how Aegis is used to control all of your radars and such and figure out how Mm -hmm. What missiles use? This mm -hmm. is roughly used for like carriers and such to operate the weapons and get all the information from your sensors all in one place. So this is a non-Aegis vessel, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Junior Tactical Data Systems (JTDS) a simpler version of NTDS for small ships with provisions for uh, link. 11 data link any idea what jtids would be used for uh that's used for data link probably just to connect the link 11 to the systems mm -hmm. prototype ocean surveillance terminal post manages correlates and displays data from many sensors unclear if this is only own ship or includes data link sensors anything you want to add about post uh i think it's like i said it's the this is also designed to work with the data that you get, but I don't know if it's if it includes the data link data or not. Sort of like the theater screen you get with mm -hmm. your F eighteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Carrier Intelligence Center (CVIC) Intelligence Data Fusion Center, which is used for planning strike missions. That would be interesting to have a look at that, wouldn't it? I wonder if that would be like a kind of F ten map in DCS where you could see the map and plan plot stuff, and that would be. Yeah. I remember having a look at some of the stuff, but it, um, it's like you, you get data from all over the place. You like satellite damage, mm. satellite images. Uh, mm. like obviously, intelligence there, so it's probably going to have some sort of mm. secure. So this is some, yeah. This brings a lot of stuff in and displays it to a bunch of important people. I'm imagining. Yeah, Pretty and cool. then they figure out when it's blown up. Roger, a uh, Naval Tactical Command System afloat, NTCS afloat. Tactical planning system uses same database for all users, which is constantly updated with data from sources such as data link and ship's sensors. Okay. Anti-submarine classification analysis center, ASCAC, used to work in close conjunction with uh, anti surface warfare units? What's that? That should be anti submarine, anti -submarine warfare submarine. units. I always forget. Okay, so so this is somewhere that class this is somewhere that is a uh, system that's listening and trying to classify sub pings. Is that right? Or yep, and it probably could take data from like your destroyers and such and try to classify those too if it needed to. Okay, interesting. 
Uh, added in 96, Joint Service Imagery Processing System Navy JSIPS M. System used to process imagery for many types of variety of tactical nas uh, national sources precision attacks, such as JDAMs, JSALs, and TLAMs. Okay, so that's Microsoft Paint for the USN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. 2006 added cooperative engagement capability CEC USG2 system that data links members of a battle group to share IFF and sensor data for fire control can allow units in that network to use data from other ships to fire or even guide others ships missiles and more USG2 is surface version air version is USG3 how interesting so this is a system that links vessels together in the battle group so that we can attack based on someone else's data yep uh, it's called sensor nating so effectively the entire battle group is like a an entire network of sensors so in a modern kind of two year 2000 plus battle group you've got a hell of a lot of data flying about in this battle group haven't you oh tons of it mm. i was just think of all the people that sit and have to program all this stuff and it's all out of date after a few years so it all has to be programmed again job security Interesting. Okay. In 2007, introduced Ship Self-Defense System, SSDS Mark II, designed to combine ship sensors, CC, and data links for fast reaction defense against sea skimming missiles such, uh, sorry, using a system such as point defense missiles and uh, electronic countermeasures. So a lot of big words there, but it's something that collates data to listen for, analyze, and plan avoision or evasion or you know destruction of incoming missiles is that right uh yep uh this is this was designed specifically probably because uh russia has been developing hypersonic missiles mm -hmm. you've got to react to it like immediately so right oh, so is, it could possibly uh, be ballistic missiles not just skimmers uh so this skimmers one's here. probably meant more for skimmers but yeah i thought it was a bit uh, early i thought it was a bit early for ballistics yeah 2007 right okay added 2007 slx one torpedo detection system software designed to use parts of sonar suite to detect torpedoes has had different acronyms over the years and is unclear how they differ so we've gone from as dick you know guy sonar with a guy with some earphones listening and we're still going to have that but to these fancy systems in 2007 that kind of automate it i guess um, yeah, uh yeah, fire car, it uses Dixie to try to listen for incoming torpedoes. Yeah, right. That makes sense. Yes, yeah, so, so it's like a another machine in the loop then. Okay. Um, I don't quite understand this, but I think added 2010-2014. Aviation Data Management and Control System, AD ADMAX. Tactical local area network for management of aircraft, such as hangar, flight deck usage, ammo and fuel aviation available for divisions related to planning, management, launching and retrieval of aircraft. Fine. Yeah, uh, to explain that, before they added this in there, they had something called the Ouija board, which it represented everything that was going on in the aircraft carrier yeah. on deck and such, using the little planes and like nuts and bolts. Yeah. I mean, represent different things. It's amazing. It took until 2010 to replace that, right? Yeah, it, it shows us how well it worked. Yeah, it's fair play. If not broke, don't fix it. Link, uh, the different links we've got here, most of them you'll recognize. Link 4 uh, was in the Tomcat, you remember. Um, Tadal C, Data Link, uh, what does BTW mean? But with air and between. surface units, oh, between air and surface units for ATC auto carrier landing. Uh, remember, the F-14 had Link 4 for automatic carrier landing. Air intercept, stripe vectoring, and uh, sending canes. God, I can't remember what canes is. I did study it with the Tomcat, but I've completely forgotten now. Yeah, uh, that's using the carrier-assisted INS. INS, so yeah. You're using the carrier to help set I it. I remember it. Yeah, got it. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, link 11. Um, the, all these links, these are all radio-based. Yeah, they must be. Link 11, Tadal A. Secure data link for U.S. Navy ships and some other th some aircraft for near real-time tactical picture. One unit is net controller. All others are picket sharing their data. Then net controller shares the overall picture. Uses high frequency ultra high frequency in SAPCOM. Okay, link eleven. You know what? I wish I knew. I know this information will be out there, but I'd love to see all the links 
types and when they were in use, when they started and when they finished. Because the one thing I really don't understand about these. Link 14, teleprinter data link and designed to receive link 11 messages, not commonly used. Link 16, which is what's used on most of our planes in DCS, F16, F18. Technically, the Jeff uses it, although in real life, I don't think Jeff uses Link 16 and so on. Secure jam resistant TDMA data link for joint operations can be sent over line of sight SATCOM and over long haul protocols such as TCP IP intended to replace the link 4A. Lovely bit of uh, history there about the links. Right, anything to add about the systems until we move on to the fancy bits, which is going to be the armament and then the aircraft? Uh, I think we covered most of it pretty good. Roger. First, we're going to go two, three times eight RIM 7P Sea Sparrows, 24 plus in total. So, does that mean three, if you like, launchers, each with eight tubes? Range 26 kilometers, 14 nautical miles max, payload with a 40 kilo blast rag warhead notes, point defense missile based off AIM 7, designed for close range, low flying surface threat. 7P has an added computer. Uh, SM2 ESK uplink for mid course corrections, lofting flight, and delayed fusing. Uh, we've got here taken away in 2007 was one block of eight sea sparrows, taken away 2010 to 2014, two times. So the rest of the sea sparrows, so they're all gone now. Uh, well, it They've been replaced with something a little better. Yep. Uh, added 2010-2042 to a pack. Two packs of eight RIM-162 Delta Enhanced Sea Sparrow Missile ESSM uh, 16 or more. 50 kilometer, 27 nautical mile range. That's impressive. Actual max is classified. Same type of warhead. Uh, heavily redesigned RIM-7 that can work with Aegis system enhanced Mints include larger booster for better acceleration computer thrust vectoring did not know that how interesting 50 D turns to counter uh, maneuvering anti-surface missiles yeah uh, the this D variant is designed to use the same launcher as the Sea Sparrow so it's like we got rid of the uh, Sea Sparrow RIM-7 and replaced them with these, these old bad boys they do seem really good I was unaware of these. Okay, that's I'm learning. Added 2007 2x21. These are going to be the small ball ones. I never really understood. The RIM 116B rolling airframe missile, the RAMs. FAF point defense missile for anti surface missile spam uh, with 95% success rate. Uses Stinger IR Seeker, didn't know that, with passive radar to home on targets. Uses AIM 9 body. Okay, warhead and motor, right? So it's right. So it's name nine with a different with a Stinger C car. How interesting! Uh, yeah, it's like it it used some parts of the AM nine, but not all of it. Hmm. B variant adds IR only mode, rifling uh, imparts. Oh, so this is so this is why it's called RAM. Then rifling imparts a roll to the missile can engage helicopters, aircraft, and surface threats. Um, with HAS software upgrade. So it spins the missile. What's that all about? Uh, it's, that's designed to help make it stable on flight. Hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, four times. SeaWiz Mark 15 Phalanx Block 1A 600 rounds plus each. I'm guessing that is or more, I would have thought. 3.5 kilometers max. Uh, we've got here 89 to 90 depleted uranium. APDS tungsten. What's APDS? Um, armor piercing defense sabo. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seawears unit using 20 mil micro 61 Vulcan cannon, a self-contained unit, but may receive outside inputs from CCS. Can so other radars, other systems, can run in auto, manual, and recommended modes. Does not have IFF. It does have several modes. Has lots of modes, doesn't it? I was reading about. The use of it in the uh, in the 90s, you can put it on all kinds of different modes. Uh, it does not have IFF. Um, yeah, so yeah, careful so what you choose. Gotta be, yeah, you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. Don't just turn it on when you got buddies mm -hmm. in the area. 
And that's why it's got all these modes because you're really careful because you might want it to shoot but only shoot at a certain thing and it can't tell what's what remember so uh 2007 was taken away one time see whiz uh our way as well we've got 10 times uh m2 browning machine guns half inch i think they are two kilometers uh effective fires that mounted a heavy machine gun for small boat and pier defense so, uh, yeah it's fine anything about the self-defense equipment armament before we move on to the aircraft um yeah the uh enhanced e sparrow missile the reason why that came about was is that the air force decided to go with the uh the AMRAM missile, so what that did was that, that allowed uh, Raytheon to approach the Navy and be like, well, we can design this thing to be explicitly a, a, a surface air missile, and oh boy, did they do a good job on it. Roger. Okay. Right, aircraft has capacity of up to 90 aircraft. Flight deck is 22,000 meters squared. Hangar, 7,000 meters squared. Sample loadouts, 24 Tomcat A models, 24 FA-18As or uh, A-7Es, 10 A-6 intruders, uh, 4 EA-6Bs. Are they the electronic warfare? I forgot what they were yep. called. Uh, those ones are the prowlers. There we go. 4 E-2C Hawkeye, 10 S-3 Viking, 4 KA-64 helicopter, 6 SH-3GH, or... I think that means 14 FA 18 AD, uh, 30 FA 18 EF Super Hornets, 6 uh, Growler 18, 6 Hawkeye, 2. What's the C2? Uh, cargo transport. Cargo transport and uh, 10. So this would be a more modern loadout, then, wouldn't it? 10. Um, uh, oh, sorry, not Seahawks. What are they called? I've forgotten. But the, uh, the helicopters. Um, actual loadout could bed on mission type can practically uh, carry any carrier designed fixed wing aircraft and practically any rotary aircraft due to the large variety of aircraft available and abbreviated aircraft section has been provided to avoid bloating in depth stats may be provided upon request so big daddy that everyone knows is of course the F-14A, B and D Tomcat a uh, fighter, fighter born from the need for a long endurance interceptor against long-range Soviet bombers and better maneuverability than the F-4. Uh, the result was the variable wing fighter along with the iconic AIM-54 Phoenix, which we've all been on the end of now. Later in his life, it would fill the hole left by the A-6 intruder and gained the nickname Bombcat. Now is only in use by Iran due to uh, trade deals. B variant upgrades engines RW1 radar D and B uh, plus IRST new jammer link 16 and ejection seats. And um, where do we go now? We go uh, the FA 18A C and D Hornet, a fighter built with the intent of fulfilling both attack and fighter roles. It has been noted for great maintenance, uh, availability and flexibility, but criticized for less range payload than the F-14 and A-6. A variant is original single seat model. Uh, a variant is single seat model. C and D are heavily upgraded, allowing for AMRAMs, Mavericks, Harpoons, T-Pods, night vision displays and two full color MFDs. Some D variants are modded for night attack and recon, retired in some services, still operates for others. FA-18EF Super Hornets, a mostly redesigned fighter based off the Hornet designed with a radar cross-section reduction in mind. I wasn't aware of that. It would take the role of the F-14, although how it uh, came to be controversial. This craft has received two blocks of upgrades. One, upgrading the RWR countermeasures and adding ACE radar. Block two also had... The helmet mounted display and comms upgrades. A new wave of upgrades has been worked on uh, since 2019. A6 Intruder, they're all out of service now, aren't they? Uh, all weather two seater uh, attack craft has been notable for its interconnected avionics. The E variant would see this craft use a large variety of latest guided munitions, a huge upgrade to the avionics suite. 
uh, and a turreted suite for IR and visual sensors under the nose. The retirement of the A6 has been questioned since no craft available can match its range and payload, which is interesting. On to the mighty A7E Corsair II, an attack craft designed with the purpose of being subsonic due to uh, noticed performance improvements. Uh, the E variant uses the engines from the Air Force's D variant, but uses different radar. This variant would see usage with guided munitions such as the Warlay and the Harm. It also saw some use as tanker during some missions. EA uh, 6B Prowler. This craft was used off of the A6, but being focused on electronic warfare by German enemy radar, comms, and even remote IED trigger as well. Using its ARQ-99 pods, it can provide ELINT, so the acquisition of enemy radar information with the ALQ-219, and use Shrikes, <laughs> terrible, and HARMS, anti-radio radiation missiles in 98. It was the only airborne US EW platform until the Growler uh, based on wood appeared. The ALQ-99s are known for the, to have reliability issues. The EA-18G Growler. This craft is a modified Super Hornet for use in electronic warfare. Unlike the Prowler, this jet can data link with other 18Gs to pinpoint an enemy radiation source and engage from standoff range. Also, it can use its radios while jamming. It uses the ALQ-99 and the ALQ-219 pods currently with bonus of the pods causing some slowdown and interfering with AES as certain radar functions while jamming otherwise it's 90% the same as a Super Hornet and can operate alongside them. ES-3A Shadow variant of the S-3 Viking. This craft was designed to provide ELINT support for the fleet replacing the EA-3B. It uses the uh, same center suite as the EP-3E Ryan. This craft can also perform the buddy store of all other S3 craft refueling allied craft when needed. One we all know is the E2CD Hawkeye, an airborne early warning and control uh, turbo rotor, which has seen numerous production runs and upgrades over the years, referred to as group uh, referred to as groups. Okay, most are C. Uh, most C are Group Two, which have data link 4A and the modern 16 CEC and an extensive comms and radar suites. The variants feature a new Acer UHF radar suspected to be able to detect fifth gen aircraft. Interesting. Both C and D are able to provide uh, AEW, uh, CNC monitoring and ATC if needed. S3 AB Viking originally designed as a anti is this anti submarine or anti surface warfare anti submarine warfare had uh, it had a mad built in sonar buoy dispenser long endurance and pylons for torpedoes B variant saw radar upgrades harpoons buddy store and link 16 added when the USSR fell apart it would see service with surface search and attack tanker and over the horizon targeting uh, retired in 2009, there have been theories of this craft making a return. How interesting. Yeah, it's one of the things where, um, due to the ballistic missile threat being come from places like China, they got to find a way to extend the range to uh, planes such as the uh, Super Hornet. Roger. Uh, we've got a KA-60 Tudor Sum. The A6s were converted to a tanker role. They were highly valued as they could keep up with the strike group and provide refueling en route. So few were available that they were often moved from an ongoing carrier to an incoming one. This would greatly stress the airframe due to the repeated usage. They were replaced by S3s until FA-18EF came, which can buddy refuel. C2AR Greyhound based off the E2. Don't know this plane. This craft can transport important cargo, mail, passengers, and even jet engines and special stores to and from CVs. It can also transport for medivacs and air troop, uh, airdrop supplies. The R notes a new batch that was built and contains improved avionics, airframe, and a eight-bladed propeller. It is planned to be replaced in 2024. SHG 3GH Seeking, an amphibious anti submarine warfare helicopter designed to combine the hunter and killer roles in order to counter Soviet thrusts, 
subthreat G variant was cargo and utility transport variant. H was an upgrade of, on G for the anti-submarine role with a anti-submarine uh, warfare uh, improvements, anti-ASM, anti-ship missile detection, anti-ship missile detection, yeah, and airframe improvements can also perform uh, search and rescue and uh, air to surface anti-surface warfare, uh, medevac and other roles. SH-60F Ocean Hawk. This hello was uh, entered uh, to compete with to com compete to or replace. Can't can't talk. This hello was entered to compete to replace the SH-3 and succeeded. It serves as uh, AWS role. Sorry, AWS. I think that's supposed to be a anti-sub warfare role and comes equipped with a dipping sonar, six-tube sonar boy launcher. Uh, can could carry a variety of lightweight torpedoes. That's interesting, and mount machine guns such as the Gau 12 and the M24D would be phased out for the MH60S. HH-60H, this helo was designed with the role of combat search and rescue and special operations in mind. Uh, as such, it came with IR jammers, laser, radar, and missile launch decoys. It also has a FLIR turret with laser designator. It can equip miniguns, mavericks, hellfires, and rockets, amongst other equipment. It also worked with SEAL teams. It is being phased out for the MH-60S, MH-60R, Seahawk. This is a block two of the LAMP, so anti-submarine uh, three avionics suite combining the 60B and 60F features such as H detection suite, FLIR, advanced sonar, and radar, IFF interrogator. It does not have the MAD. This uh, Hello Hilo has gained the ability to use the new Mark 54 lightweight torpedo and the Hellfire missile. That's interesting. It also has new glass cockpit. M860S Nighthawk. This Hilo uh, was designed to replace the CH-46, uh, where its nickname comes from. It uh, can perform mine sweeping with laser tracker, towed mine sonar, and anti-mine drones. Interesting. It can also perform vert prep medipack. Vert prep? Vert rep? Uh, vert rep. Vertical replenishment. Medi okay. Medivac, Intel, uh, surveillance, anti surface warfare, uh, special missions, and more. It can be equipped with Hellfires, gun, gun, hydro rockets, FLIR, and IR jammer. Note uh, there are newer craft that are scheduled to come aboard these Nimitz class carriers. The two. Not uh, notable entries right now are a variant of the Offspray to replace the C2, known as CVM 22B. Also, the F35C Lightning is uh, planned to start missions on board the Nimitz class if it has not already started operations by the time of this writing. Also, it has been noted that the U.S. Army uh, helicopter operated from a US from a Nimitz carrier, so it is possible to house most helicopters, but likely not a common setup. Uh, a lack of ability to compact itself, as all these planes and stuff, they can compact themselves, fold their wings, fold their rotors and stuff, can't they? Do um, yep. uh, and uh, anti corrosion treating, obviously. I mean, ev everything rusts out there uh, may not make this uh, a standard loadout. Note, the USS John C. Stennis represents what at the time would be the largest and most advanced class of CVM being able to carry an air wing and her escort to the area. This can result uh, in a very heavy amount of firepower. However, most of her firepower comes strictly from her air wing. She does not have many weapons herself and many of them are meant for point defence. And she can't fight threats without her air wing or escort as such. Escorts are required for any real operation. A loss of a Nimitz aircraft carrier can be considered a very severe blow. The aircraft uh, carrier itself, uh, 45 billion well, dollars and over 3,000 lives, including 2,000, 3,000 air wing. This sort of loss, if ever to occur, is believed to likely result in nothing less than declaration of war. These, well, no shit. 
These aircraft uh, do represent a great amount of power, but the power requires a large escort involving massive missile-based defense from uh, guided uh, uh, destroyers um, and guided uh, missile cru uh, cruisers, uh, anti-submarine warfare defense from cruisers and uh, destroyers, helicopters and submarines. Ships of this class have been built over a period of 20 years which have resulted in superstructures that will vary wildly and even the same ship from different periods of its life uh, can look very different, you know, they get upgraded. For instance, I'm able to estimate the DTS Dennis represents a time from uh, time frame from February 2007 to 2013 based on its superstructure capabilities across the class should be roughly equal though. Images. Right, so what are we looking at here? CVN 74 in DCS. Is that right, RC? Uh, yep. RC. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yep. Uh, this is based on off of the model. Um, one of the valued viewers, uh, Louis Toroman, uh, gave me the end game screenshots and uh, I identified it as much as I could with it. Well done. So let's have a little look at this. So CVN 74 in DC, uh, DCS. We've got super high frequency sat to there. We've got Takan there. That's interesting. So that's where the Takan station is. Cool. It's almost like a little VOR by the looks of it. Uh, SPQ9B, the Link 16 data link there. The SPN43B there. Uh, the HF sat there. I, I've forgotten what most of these are already, to be honest. There's so many of them. But awesome picture. I'm just looking around. There's a 3D, there's a 3D air and surface search radar. Uh, I can't remember what that is. A guy that's a fire control radar, I remember. Yeah, uh, for Sea Sparrow. Roger, for Sea Sparrow, yeah. Okay, awesome. Wow, so many antennae there. More Sea Sparrow stuff. Uh, okay. Starboard side, um, we've got here. Okay. More Mark 90. So it's got those Mark 95s, or at least I had them dotted around before they were replaced, right? 2014 by the yeah, this oh yeah we still have four of them so this is what we would see on mm -hmm. more yeah, and that that would be for either sea sparrow or enhanced sea sparrow more on there. common data tactical data link how interesting okay dcs uh so sort of brownings oh the rams there uh, the ball there. What's the GBS? Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. Global something is this? Uh, Brownie. Global broadcast. Roger. Uh, and the sources. Right, very good, D. Anything before we go and have a look ourselves in DCS and have a look at this and the supercarriers? Okay, welcome into DCS. We've got the four carriers: CBN one, uh, CBN seventy-one through to seventy-four here. Out of interest, if I become a game master or tactical commander, I can control these. Um, I can click on one of them, or the whole group in this case, actually. I can tell them to fire, return fire, or hold fire. I can put their state from red to green, and I know what's about to happen, so I'm going to put them to red. I can change their speed if I wanted to, although they've already got an assigned speed, so I don't want to mess with it. I could set a path by clicking set path there, then left click as many waypoints as I want, and right click to confirm the train of waypoint, and then they will go via that speed. Ignore the depth. And I cannot attack a target because I've got no offensive weapons. Uh, and that's it. So they're already on their path. Let's go and have a look at their models. So, first of all, CVN. Whoops, let's let it load. CVN 74. CVN 72. CVN 70. Oh, sorry, 73. 72. And 71. So they all look pretty much the same, as you can see. Um, do you know what eras? Are they all about the same era, do you think? The models that we've got. Yeah, these should roughly be about the same thing. I think the other three are going to be a little newer based on some of their radar. Mantra. Washington. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. The models, uh, yeah, the meshes are a lot better on the... 71, 71 to 73, which are the super carrier. Uh, we've got this kind of complete oh, LSO station with monitors, working monitors. Um, of course, if you've seen all the videos, they've got these these crew that do their various jobs for receiving. 
I'm sending the aircraft off and it's super detailed as you can see uh, ball is super detailed yeah so if you notice uh, there it's got the radon right next to the clothes on this one whereas the other one doesn't quite have that there on the uh, stennis so that looks so, like a fire control yeah. radar you'll come to it in a minute the, the square one the ball one what, what are these two radars i'm highlighting do you think uh that one's an shf the mm -hmm. one behind that is ehf and the one next to it is the meteorological uh, radar oh. or satcom connection okay interesting Yes. But if you look at the tennis, you'll notice those things are going to be placed different. It's just, I think that just represents the march of technology. Yeah. You just got to try to find new places to put all this crap. Right. Yeah. So this is back to Stennis, I think, here. Whoops. And I've got Sea Sparrow. Oh, uh-oh. Right. Okay, valued viewers. Now, I didn't tell you, but unfortunately... Oh, my God. Uh, over the horizon has just come a flotilla of destroyers and one's managed to shoot itself. Look at that one. That one's blown itself up. Stupid Chinese destroyers or what? Uh, yeah, so a, uh, a flotilla of Chinese destroyers have just turned up. Various hull numbers. And uh, as you can see, are, are in a, going in an attack fan. I don't know who shot this guy. And there are lots of missiles. The, <laughs> there are lots of YJ-62s coming in. Oh, this is going to be ugly. So we're looking at the defensive capability. Sea Wizards are going. Get saw! This may get a little bit crashy, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you can tell the difference between the ESSM and the Sea Sparrow by the ESSM's going to look like a, a miniature SM2. Roger. Oh, we got hits! One carrier down. Next carrier's here. They're just overwhelmed. They're just overwhelmed. And that's how you kill a carrier. You can't get an undetected, but you can just overwhelm it. That's called a saturation attack. So we've got sea sparrows. We've got rams going out. We've got... Do you know if the rams... The rams probably don't have a smoke trail, I would imagine. Probably the sea sparrows, the advanced sea sparrows that have the smoke trail. I guess. I haven't really got time to stop and look. Or is that the attack over? Oh, we've lost 71, we've lost 72. There's poor guys on the deck. Help me! Help me! But he's literally looking up at it. Oh, the older ones are still getting pounded. It's a terrible thing to happen. Oh, look at that. We've inflicted losses with our complete lack of offensive weapons. Yeah, the only thing we're thinking is like, what type of marshmallows are roast on that plane mm -hmm. for? Boom. Oh, it's horrible to watch. How many more do we have to suffer? Oh, only two more. And the flotillas are all out of, um, finally, all out of Chinese harpoons. I recall, right? Those guys are like eight per side. So. Oh, look, there is one. Stop. Finally, we get a look at it. It's the first time I've seen a ram. It does spin. Doesn't look much like yep. a side one to me, D, but okay. Oh, it's the uh, the body. It's like the body and the thruster in the back order sidewinder, but the rest of it is modified. How interesting. What an interesting piece of kit that is. It's great to see the model there. So this is a ram going out to now one of those... Uh, one of those harpoons. And you can even see the IR sensor yeah. and the two little bumps are probably the uh, the passive sensor. Yeah. How interesting. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get some, you mother! Fuse goes off, boom. Very interesting stuff. Oh, it's sunk! Bless its little cotton socks. It's gone down. It's gone down. No one wants to see that. Look, it goes all the way down. Oh, no! No, George, what, not George Washington, who is he? Oh, the other guy's going down too. It's horrific. That is nothing less than a declaration of war. No. Probably a rubber duckies on that one. Mm-hmm. 
How embarrassing for me. Look at that. So frigging cool. But the men are still on it, just like, what? I'm going to just do my job. That is a deep piece of water, D. I'm glad they got the well, copper sink him, right? Yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't gone stuck. Oh, they, there it goes. Did they make the, uh... Did they make the depth of the water deeper? Because I remember it was only like 10 feet last mm -hmm. time or something. I don't know, I won't let me look in it, so... I guess so. Right. Phalanx. D defending the, what, the uh, port stern. Here, look, here's a uh, sea sparrow launcher. Yeah, eight, as we can see. Uh, radar. I'm trying to find a ram. Ram. Uh, ram. Look towards the front. It'll probably be there. There it is. Found it. Look. Look, look how many rams it fired. That's how many it fired. For all of them. Yeah, that's, I guess, why. Amazing stuff. Ah, look at the anchor. Frigging sexy. Oh, I know that gold anchor is uh, significant. I can't remember why. It's really? it's supposed to be like an indication of like if you've got like a fish board or something. Yeah, oh, I look. can't remember. This one doesn't have a gold anchor. This one has a normal anchor. How interesting. Yep. Wicked. Um, M2s. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Very oh, good. That's cool. Yeah, I'm really chuffed by that. I was wondering if they got like the other six like hidden somewhere in the uh, some of those lower door areas or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they're so big you can't find them until you literally go down here. What the hell's all this? What is that? No idea. But that's a refueling station to take on fuel. It looks like that. Yeah, I think it is. Unrep station, as we'd call it, or underway replenishment. Not a not a very nice job yet. More of them. More of them. Little boat look. Hello boat. Place. A place. A place. Jesus, it's big. I can't get how friggin' big it is. There's your ram. The ram, ram launch is massive. I thought it was tiny, but that's like twice as big as a person. Yeah, and like for launchers, it's not decent. Not a bad size. Not a bad bit of kit for five billion dollars. Weird end, weird end here. Look, you can get down there for some reason. Maybe that's to do with the... No, I don't know what that could be. I think that's got to do with... Um, you have a place for, like, uh, tugboats to push up against. Oh, it's like a little dock. A mobile dock. Oh, Something like that. Cool. All this out here, out here, whatever this is for. What are these droppy things? Oh... Uh, those look like they're designed to like rub up against something like. Oh, I thought that. Uh, would, I thought yeah. That it'd would be like a tugboat or something would bump against. Roger, them or we're going in, Dave. Like we're going in. Ah, uh, not really. That. Seems yeah. Barren. If you're if you're wondering why there was a big door there, that's where they go to re to do maintenance on the uh, aircraft, and they'll just open up the. Back. Whoa, that's a Nolco. I didn't expect that there. What's that? Uh, right next to the big radar. Yeah, that's a that looks like a Nolco launcher. What's that's that like the active uh, active uh, missile jamming. Oh, it fires out a uh, it fires out a module that has a parachute on it, and it sends out a uh, a, radi a radar signature that looks like the ship that it's launched from. Was not expecting to see that one. Yeah, there you go. Look, little look, look. If they get fl if they're on the LSO station like they do, and they get blown off. They get in this little this little funnel thing and it and it sucks them back in down here. Whee! And they get down here. So that's cool. I'm gonna call that the grabber. It grabs men. <laughs> Something I like to do. Well, D, what do you think about that? It's awesomely modelled, right? I could sit for ages going around these little dresses and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it makes me think that when I used to play um uh, World of Warships, I would do that sometimes, uh -huh. just try to peek around the model. Yeah, I'd love to have a go at that. Right, it's got this little door you can open and it just goes, oh, hello! I can do nothing but 
Look at my castle. Very cool. Right. All these structures modelled in here. It's, uh, someone's put a lot of effort into this. I'm not going to lie. Oh, uh, yeah. I've need ducks up here. Right. Look at the uh, all of this. Oh, yeah. They, they got all the... Uh uh, Mini boss. The, the branches. Yep. Oh, he looks happy. Mm. Got an important job to do, D. Which one of those would be the bridge, and which one would be the uh, not the foggiest? The not the foggiest. I'm looking for Captain, but I don't see Captain anywhere. I want to say it'd be the lower one, but. Mm. Sh that there's our old, there's our old VHF and HF radios antennas. That's actually the uh, UHF uh, yeah. surface to air. A sprinkler bomb farm there. Another good sprinkler bomb farm. Oh yeah, HFLF. That's designed for like got like oil fires or something like that. There's a cool little watching platform here. Watching platform. Oh, it's a TV camera. Look. That would be my job. Yeah. I'd sit. Ouch! I'm just. Ow! 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 That would be my job. I would sit there on the TV camera, going. Brr. Sure, the TV yeah, camera's big enough. Yeah, there's a cool story about that one. Um, the USS Forrestal incident. Mm -hmm, yep. They used a camera just like that to try to figure out what happened. And there's okay. a whole story on how the guy managed to figure out that the flashes that they were seeing was re reflecting off of the glass surface oh. somewhere else. It was crazy. Interesting. Stuff. I'd love to see that one day. Oh, this, I'll tell you what's cool, is that when you look at this boat from an aeroplane, yeah, this little uh, island looks tiny. It looks like a couple of pixels, right? Look how big it is. There's a man doing his thing. Next floor, 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 next floor. It just defies logic how stupidly big this thing is. Yeah, that's, I wonder it'd be like to actually see a super carrier up close. Like I said, I only saw the Kitty Hawk, which I it. I didn't realize they were called super carriers in real life. I thought that was just a Wagner term. Oh they no, they, they've learned that term. Okay. Look at window wipers there. Yep. Hey boys. I'm impressed with how they modeled the uh, the uniforms. I just can't actually tell who, which Airboss. ones are like uh, petty officers. But mm -hmm. Airboss looks very unhappy at the moment. He's got his own little cubicle look. Yep. They'll get. There's no females. They'll get done for sexism. I swear. And there's no black people. They'll get done for racism. I swear. We. What's back here? Oh look, it's Cap's place. Look at that. This is where I just hang out sometimes. D. Look, watch the boys land and crash when they try and land. Bollock them. <laughs> there you uh, go. And then when I'm really unhappy, I get up here. Boys, what are you doing? That's so funny. I wish we could walk around it. I would do such silly things. Are probably... they planning on doing something like that eventually? Uh, another place here, look. Another place. If I want to go and. Look, you just walk around all these little things. La 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 and I wanna go over there. Pick and I'm gonna go over there and over there and over there and over that there. That might be a bit of a big squeeze. That might be a bit. Gotta do I it. Think that's probably there just to clean the windows. I was gonna say push. gotta clean those windows, D. And back in and there. And then down here. And then down here. We and then down here. And then down here. And then down here. Oh, and then you, you can't go any further, look. Right. Anyway, I could spend all day going around this, and I shouldn't, because it's just a waste of everyone's time. Thank you very much, D. Anything final thoughts to put out before we... Um, before I go and try and make that look sexy somehow? Um, I'm just really impressed by just all the little details. I wasn't expecting them to have the, uh, the walkways just all over the place like that. I'm really impressed. Roger. Good. Let's see if we can get a final picture and sign off. Yeah, the one thing I'd like to be tested if possible is like, are 
all the super carriers launching just the regular sea stairs or did one of them have the ESSMs in there or I'm trying to figure out if it's that or if it's something they're going to add later. How do I tell the, how do I tell the difference? Um, the regular Sea Sparrow would be like the Rim 9 L or Rim 7 L look just like it does when you fire it off of a Tomcat. Roger. Uh, the uh, enhanced Sea Sparrow missiles will look like a tiny SM2. Oh, how interesting. Okay, I'll find out. Okay, Dee, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you later.